Good morning. My name is June Van Bastelor, and what you've just seen is a part of a performance by Ian Sadler. He's a renowned organist, received many awards, including a Juno Award, and he is coming to play on our, our organ a concert on September 15th. That's a Saturday evening at 7.30. And uh, we're just really getting going now on selling tickets, but I will be down in the activity center after at the service today. And I'm hoping that you, uh, you come out for the performance and bring along your family and friends. Uh, this is a fundraiser for a church she's offered to do. So um, we'll see you um, later. And if you don't uh, get this message here today, there are, will be tickets available in the office for sale as well. So please come out and hear, hear Ian. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Port Elgin United Church. I always find it interesting um, that often when I'm looking for something, it's there. It's there before you even realize it's there. I was just uh, walking in the, uh, in the hallway outside of the sanctuary, and um, I was looking at the uh, display board, the display center, and I've walked by it every single day this week, and finally I stopped to read it, and it said, if you find yourself a bit irritated or overwhelmed, it's a sign that you're spending less time with God and more time with this world. If you find yourself a bit irritated or overwhelmed, it's a sign that you're spending less time with God and more time with this world. I think I'm just going to sit down and for the next 55 minutes you can ponder that. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? I'm so glad that we are gathered here today to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ and to share time together. If you are visiting Port Elgin United Church, we welcome you and we hope that you will sign the guest book. It is just outside of, of uh, the sanctuary in our welcome center. And if there are children visiting with us today, we hope that they might take some time and go to the junior pod. Now, this time of the year, uh, we do not have uh, a teacher in the pod, a dedicated teacher. But if you would like to uh, get your children started in some of the activities that are there uh, and then come back into the sanctuary or stay with your child there, uh, you are most welcome to do. And of course, children are always welcome to remain in the sanctuary too. And following worship, we do have a time of refreshments, and uh, we hope that you will stay and uh, join us in the activity center at the end of the hall. Our full announcements, uh, many have already been on our big screen this morning. They're also found online and in our Friday file. And at the end of worship today, we will be sharing more announcements, uh, many things that are going on in this community and certainly in this church. So let us just gather ourselves into a time of quiet and prepare ourselves for worship this day. Out of all our daily times and places, our end of summer activities and day-to-day -day responsibilities, we come to this special time and place to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. So let us rejoice and be glad this day that we can safely and freely gather together and let us worship God in this place. We begin by acknowledging the land upon which we gather this day. We gather for worship on the traditional territories of the Ojibwe and other indigenous peoples who preceded them, the original nations of this land, and we acknowledge their history, their spirituality, and their culture we seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based on honor and deep respect. And let us begin by lighting the Christ candle. It's been a hot summer, hasn't it? We haven't needed too many fires or heat or sweaters or anything like that, but we do need the heat and the light of the love of Jesus Christ. And so today, as we light this Christ candle, may the God whom we know through Jesus Christ be present among us and within us as we gather together today. The peace of Christ be with you. 
and I invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of the risen Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Good to see you. Good to see you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. And let us remain standing as we sing together. Come in, come in and sit down. Please be seated. And let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, how wonderful it is to be in this sanctuary this morning, worshiping as congregation of Port Elgin United Church. May we be lifted by the Spirit, uplifted by the Spirit, assured that you see in us the possibilities that we ourselves cannot see. Guide us to serve in your name in this community and into the world. May our worship on this Labor Day week weekend and our work bring new understanding of your presence among us and in us. May it bring honor and glory to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And how wonderful it is to sing together the familiar and beloved words of his prayer.
and all men. I uh, think there are a few children, perhaps, who would like to come up and speak with me for a few minutes this morning. You're here. Gabe is here, but he's just not allowed to come back in here because um, he was playing with his car. Okay. All right. Woo! What's this? It looks like a berry off of a wreath or something, right? It was on the tree. I just picked it out. Okay, thank you, Jax. <laughs> How many of you have one of these? And how many of you are going to be using them tomorrow on Tuesday morning? And what kinds of things do you put in them? Jordan? Pen Pencils, a notebook, Sarah? A uh, lunch, absolutely. Gabriel? Yes, markers, absolutely. I always like to carry a water bottle with me, so I'll put a water bottle in mine. And um, maybe a snack. I think a lunch is a good idea, but I think some of you probably now have uh, nutrition breaks, do you? You have three snacks or two snacks a day? Two snacks a day, Sarah? two snacks a day. Okay. So it's quite different than um, all those years ago when I went to, uh, to school. But you know, one of the great things about having a knapsack is that there are usually a lot of little pockets you can put things in, right? And uh, when I was looking at some of the ones that are on sale now, I mean, they have all kinds of pockets. This just has a few pockets, and I can make it heavy just feeling this. But if you have one of the ones with even more pockets, it it takes a long time to fill it up, and sometimes it takes a long time to find something as well. So when you're going to school or to nursery school or to a babysitter's or whatever, there are things that we do so that everybody gets along, and those are called rules and regulations. Do you have rules and regulations at school? Yes? Yeah. Can you think of one of the rules and regulations that you might have, Gabe? No running and no yelling. Very good. Okay. Sarah. Listen to the teacher. Absolutely. Jordan. Don't go outside when you're not supposed to. Don't go outside when you're not supposed to. Can you think of any other rules and regulations? Clara. Don't be mean to people. Don't be mean to people. Wow. Sarah. Be safe, absolutely. All kinds of rules and regulations. And, um, you know, it's just the same here, right? We have rules and regulations about how we kind of think we're going to behave in church and how we think we should behave in church or Sunday school. And listening and learning and sharing with other people are all part of the rules and regulations. Today, when I'm going to be talking to the big people, I'm going to be telling them um, some stories from the Gospel of Mark and also from a letter from a person called James. And there are all kinds of rules and regulations in there about how to behave and how to do things. And one of the things they talk about in these scriptures is that we need to not only think about being safe, our body being safe, but also our heart being safe. And when I talk about our heart being safe, it means putting yourself in places where you are doing good for other people, when you are sharing with other people, where you expect the best from people, and as Clara said, not being mean to people, making new friends, and all those sorts of things that happen at a, at a time of year like this, when there are new beginnings, for sure. Those are all really, really important things. So what I just want to say to you today is that I hope you have an amazing year at school. I hope that when you go to school or daycare or the babysitters, grade two, grade one, grade zero. babysitters, <laughs> babysitters, yes, grade four, grade five. Grade five. Wow, what a range. 
Yes, well, that's pretty exciting, isn't it? I hope that you have a wonderful year, and I hope that you remember that God is always with you, loving you and caring for you, and um, that you learn a whole lot of things, and that you come here to our Discovery Cove, which begins next week, and that here you learn about the good news of Jesus Christ, and that you learn how to love God and serve God as well. So, let's have a little prayer, okay? And this is a repeat after me prayer, all right? Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for the summer months. Thank you, thank you for the school days ahead. Help us to learn how to love you and how to love others. Thank you for our teachers. Thank you for our parents and families. And thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. Now, in just a moment, we are going to sing a song. I sing the mighty power of God. And you might remember, that's right, isn't it? Okay. You might remember, just by some chance, Um, that we sang this in Vacation Bible School a year ago. But first of all, I want to um, bring up another child in our congregation, and her name is Cassidy. Where is Cassidy? Come up, Cassidy, please. Now, Cassidy has been a part of our little people from the time she was born, right? And, pardon? Pardon? about two years old and uh, this week Cassidy heads away to Peterborough to uh, further her education and Cassidy has been one of those constants in our congregation helping in so many ways and uh, I don't want to get teary because I don't want mom and dad to get teary (laughs) but Cassidy we wish you all the best and this is just a little assortment of things and um, tell me the name of your course again biotechnology biotechnology How's that? Okay. (laughs) No, it's a secret. She gets to open it at home. How about that? There have to be some secrets in life. Okay, let's stand and sing. I sing the mighty power of God. Okay, here we go. So if you're going to go into one of the classrooms to do something there, that's great. And we'll see you after worship, okay? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Please be seated.
Often our weeks are filled with trials and, yes, with temptations. And so we are offered an opportunity to share in a prayer of confession and let us join together. Let us pray. Ever-present God, on this Sunday of Labor Day weekend, we confess that our labor has not always been for your glory, that we have not, not always appreciated your works or the labors of others. We criticize but hesitate to examine ourselves. We judge without the benefit of truly understanding. We evaluate with a sense of unmerited entitlement. Forgive us, God. Renew our efforts to love and to serve in your name. Revive our vision of a world of peace, hope, and joy for your sake and the gospel, which is Jesus. As we listen, as we take the gospel to heart, we remember the love of God is without limit. The forgiveness of God is without end. Let our labors bring honor and glory to God and let our efforts bring about new vision for the word of God confronts, encourages, and calls us to new ways of being. As we listen, as we take the gospel to heart, we've resolved to begin again accepting the pardon and peace given through Jesus Christ. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let's remain seated as we sing together our after confession hymn, Come Touch Our Hearts. Today, as we open the scriptures, we're going to be hearing some rather interesting ideas about rules and regulations and how we are to live in community. Certainly within our denomination, there are ongoing talks about, you know, rules and regulations within the United Church of Canada, resulting in positive and negatives comparing ourselves to more conservative congregations, for example, we, we hear about the rules and regulations that are firmly in place so that people who attend some of these churches know exactly what they are supposed to do. You know, who can preach, who may speak publicly, um, how children are to be disciplined, regulations for relationships such as dating and sexual orientation, and yes, even attendance at worship. Now, those churches are full, 
That's one of the observations that people often bring to me. People want and need a structure that thinks for them. It makes life easier. Decisions are made faster when the rules and regulations are all in place. And um, they tell me that people will be filling the pews. They'll be standing outside. It'll be standing room only within a building that does this. But when we reflect on the words of Jesus, we we know, as he did, that religion isn't about rules and regulations. Because external forms of rituals and traditions that many of us hold dear, they're external. And they don't necessarily touch your heart, that beautiful song that we have just sung. Yes, we may know when to stand and sit and when to pass the offering plate and how much to put on, but we don't necessarily allow the words of Jesus to touch our hearts and to change us, allowing us to be transformed from the way we have been to the way that we can be. This morning, as we listen to the scripture that George is going to share with us, I invite you to think about what the Pharisees ask, to think about what James has suggested, and to think about what Jesus is expecting. Let us pray. Holy God, by your Spirit, may these ancient stories and words come alive for us. May we recognize in them both our own selves and those we encounter each and every day. Open us to your will for our lives through the stories of those who lived long ago. Amen. The first reading is from James 1, 17 to 27. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits for all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. By the world. And the second reading is from Mark 7, verses 1 to 8, 14, 21 to 23 about the defiling of the person. Verse 7. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, and they saw that some of his disciples were eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, or sorry, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups, pitchers, or kettles. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law ask Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he presided, 
when he prophesied about you hypocrites. This is as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and will defile a person. May God bless to us understanding of these scriptures. Let us pray. Loving God, these texts are difficult ones for we live in the world, a world in which there is evil, we are tempted, things lure us away in ways that we don't even understand or recognize until we are held fast. As we reflect on the word, may we hear something that encourages us to be doers of the word, to guard ourselves against those things that defile to be fully aware of what separates us from you, your love, and your desire for us to be witnesses to your forgiving grace. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts bring honor and glory to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So I hope that you've already flipped over your calendar, and if you've had to write somewhere September, I hope you've remembered that it is September. To me, this time of the year is the time of, of new beginnings. Um, I, I don't tend to make resolutions, you know, at the, at the end of the year as we look to January 1st, because to me, this is when we start things over again. And I think part of that is conditioning. You know, we, we um, grew up in, in a school system where July and August were typically uh, the months off, and so we gear up. You know, we have to uh, get ready for back to school, as I was talking with the children. This time of the year, I always have an urge, and I think I may have said this before, to buy a protractor set. Uh, you know, one of those nice little silver cases with the lettering on it. Do they even make those anymore? They do, and do people use them anymore for something other than just, you know, making circles and designs and mandalas and that sort of thing? I had that urge, and then, and then it's funny because um, as our children got older and went off to university, uh, one of the things that, that was sort of on the wish list was a, a fridge for their, their dorm room or whatever. And, um, and so it was really funny because Andrea in the office started talking about, with the help of ministry and personnel, that we should have a, a fridge in the office. And we got a fridge. And oh, I just feel so much better, you know? <laughs> I just feel so much better because we have the fridge. And uh, it was delivered and uh, it is now in use. But don't look in it because right now there's just a box of baking soda. But anyway, I know that we will have some other things in that too. You know, we, we get into sort of a rhythm, and, and this is the time of year when, when, you know, I want to make some resolutions, and I do make resolutions, and I think about, you know, how I can, can do things better or differently or, or what I'm going to leave behind and, and what I'm going to go ahead with. Um, it's also a time, I think, when we sort of look in the mirror, you know, if you've been able to uh, spend some time at the beach, you might look at yourself in a different way and say, oh my gosh, I've got beach air, or, um, you know, maybe I got a little too much sun, and, uh, you know, when we have to take off the sandals and put our feet into a real pair of shoes, and it's like, oh, and I know some of you will not do that until Thanksgiving or later, maybe even till the snow flies. But, you know, those are the realities of this time of the year. And so there are some rhythms in our lives, aren't there? And, and to me, September is the rhythm, the time of new beginnings again, for sure. 
Now, Jesus would know the rhythms and the rules of his religion. I mean, he was brought up in a Jewish home. He was taught at the feet of the the rabbi in the synagogue, wholly aware of the scribes and the Hebrews' teachings and their expectations for upholding the law. So Jesus hears that questions of the Pharisees. I mean, it was a rule and a regulation and an expectation that before touching any food, you would wash your hands. And not just wash your hands, but really wash your hands in a certain way. And um, to not do that was to defile the food. And then, as George read as well, it talked about the cooking utensils. And and that's still true today. Um, If you are uh, dining with uh, people of a different faith, there are expectations about the way the food is prepared, about the way the food is served, and what has happened to both the person who is going to receive as well as the person who is giving, who is is doing the, the giving as well. So when Jesus hears this story that is recorded in the, hears the question that is recorded in the gospel of Mark about, you know, why haven't the disciples washed their hands? Because the the Pharisees and the scribes are are watching and and all of a sudden they're just there and they're eating. They're, They're not doing what they have been taught to do. And It's interesting because Jesus doesn't try to justify what has happened. You know, he knows that these rules and regulations have been rigidly enforced, but they are a mindset, not a heart set. And as the Pharisees inquire about the lack of hand washing before the disciples eat, Jesus goes back into the scriptures to the prophet Isaiah and says, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. For Jesus, the human-made rules and regulations do not influence the heart. It is Jesus who calls to the crowds then and lists this this whole list of defiling actions. And it is Jesus who focuses on the heart of the matter. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. Certainly within our context, we are sometimes overwhelmed by, by the evil and what can defile us. The senseless and random shots fired at the Yorkdale Shopping Center in Toronto this week reminds us once again of the fragility of our peace. Disputes and clashes among specific groups, and I don't want to call them gangs because that's not necessarily the right way to describe them, but they're now everyday occurrences happening elsewhere, but also happening here in Bruce County. The opioid crises is not just happening out there, it's also happening here. And emergency personnel and hospitals are anticipating increased pressure on existing services as rules and regulations are reconfigured for the use of marijuana. We cannot live a day without hearing about reports regarding abuse by clergy within the Roman Catholic Church and the compounded abuse when those in positions of power are not disciplined for their actions. And yes, certainly within our own denomination, there have been and are abuses of power. We can't claim that our hands are completely clean. One only has to glance at the oft-forgotten history of residential schools to acknowledge that. And in the comfort of our own home, on devices that we pay for, that we pay for, on-screen violence, gambling, pornography, easily defile and desensitize us to sexual immorality, immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. And all of these evils come from outside and have the potential to defile us as people. The ancient words of Jesus ring true. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. 
Now in the letter to James, and over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about the letter of James and, and looking at it in depth. Those receiving the epistle are urged to pay attention to their actions and intentions. My dear brothers and sisters, the letter says, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Now, these words are, are not written merely as observation, but as invitation to self-evaluate and to be transformed by God's forgiving love, embracing new beginnings again. Jesus offers to the people the freedom to choose not with the head, but with the heart. Words and actions that are a direct response to God's love for them. The motivation, yes, to live well in community, and we know that that's why there were so many rules and regulations among the Hebrew people, because it was to make sure that communities could get along, that people could get along together. But we have so much more. We can also live as people of faith who freely desire to love as Jesus loves, bringing forth abundant life now and into the future. And it is certainly more than a me thing, because Jesus says to the Pharisees, you have, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. God's commandment is fulfilled through love, love of God and love of neighbor. Jesus not only speaks powerful words, he also lives them. He doesn't just speak about showing compassion and reaching out to the poor, the needy and the sinner. Jesus does it. And Jesus shares with us an example, and he calls us to follow. So today's passages, while they're difficult, and you may want to just reread them in the, in the next week or so, and I want you to think about how you are using your head, how you are using your heart. And if you are finding that you're using your heart to be filled with bitterness, to be filled with worry and concern, to be filled with things that overwhelm us, if we do that, there's not necessarily enough room to let God into our heart to fill us with the hope and joy that we can know through the risen Christ. Starting over again, again new beginnings again each and every day each and every hour each and every minute is a time that god offers us the transformation that can help us move forward into new beginnings to new opportunities to love and to serve today's passage reminds us that it is not a matter of viewing the outside it is responding to the outside it is ridding, ridding ourselves of what takes up room where Jesus' love should be. Sometimes we make it too difficult for us to, to live our lives in the rules and regulations that give us new life through Christ. The love and transformation is available for us, and may it be so. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so blessed by the scripture. Sometimes it challenges us to think about the way we are living our lives, whether we are allowing our very spirits to be defiled by what concerns us, and sometimes things that we don't even recognize. May we open ourselves to your presence. May we open ourselves to be transformed by your love, and by your promises of new beginnings again. Amen.
This is a faith community working together, coming together, and offering to others and ourselves the hope that we know through Jesus Christ. This has been a, a busy couple of weeks within congregation. There have been many uh, committees working on uh, fall activities. Um, we have a great uh, program beginning for our young people called Discovery Cove. Um, the Resource Center has been painted. And as I'm thinking of that, I'm thinking that I came in uh, the other night and uh, one of our volunteer painters was on the, the floor repainting something saying that that had been a little too thin and I understand that they were really trying to make the paint last just a little bit longer and they had maybe had you watered it down or something just watered it down a little bit and um, and so uh, you know it just wasn't up to snuff and and believe me our volunteers have a very high expectation of what it looks like and afterwards I was thinking what I should have said is repaint and thin no more. <laughs> so thank you to all of those and you know cupboards have been cleaned out and all kinds of things so thank you all for for doing the work that you're doing it's it's awesome absolutely awesome. So let us offer as we are able our morning offering to support the work and witness of this congregation here and into the world. Let us pray. What we offer to you, O God, we do not do alone. These gifts, those given through PAR, Direct Missions, and the Mission and Service Fund are yours, and we return them to you, asking for blessing on them and on us, that they may go and tell your story in word and action, growing, living, and sharing God's love. Amen. As we come before God in prayer this morning, I want to share with you um, that Betty Lou McPherson uh, died on um, Thursday. Uh, Betty was a, a member of our congregation, sat right over there uh, until recently when she moved to um, Elgin Lodge after a time in hospital. 
Her family is going to have a, a private graveside service, so there will not be a, a public celebration of her life. But we certainly remember Betty with, uh, with great um, laughter. Um, she was, and she was also one that always told me exactly what she thought. And um, we certainly remember her and hold her, her three children and their families in our hearts and prayers this day. Let us pray. Eternal and ever-loving God, we come before you mindful of all the blessings of our lives, the blessings of home and family and friends, the blessings of our faith in that we can meet together to worship and praise you, the blessings of your Holy Spirit, the Comforter who is with us always. Today we remember the areas of our lives which is our work, whether in the home or in some other place, where, whether in our retirement or leisure or our daily responsibilities. Teach us, God, to regard our work as ministry in your name. We remember those who cannot work for whatever reason. Help us to understand the scarring of the human spirit when work is sought but cannot be found. Help us to labor for the day when all will be treated with dignity and respect and all will live fulfilling lives. We ask for your blessing, God, on all who work the land. Be near to farmers in this hectic season. Give them strength for their daily tasks, caring and working with machinery, thankful hearts in reaping the harvest of our bounty. In this community, we ask for your blessing, God, on all who work within the power generating industry. We are grateful for the employment provided to many within this community and beyond. Be with us, gracious God. Give us strength for our daily tasks, for our daily work. Care with our fellow workers and thankful hearts as we contribute to the well-being of our community and the world. This day we pray for our world, for Pakistan, Australia, and certainly for our country of Canada. We pray for those working for peace and enough for all, remembering Canadian peacemakers and peacekeepers and their families. We pray for our community of Sogging Shores and we pray for communities of faith, including West Mount, Ro Mount Ro Rose in Waterloo Presbytery. And we pray for the work and witness of Port Elgin United Church, for council and chair John Van Burlow meeting on Wednesday, for committee chairs and all who volunteer, and all who are thinking about volunteering and sharing their gifts. Loving God, this day we remember those who are unable to be with us, the sick, those in hospital and long-term care, those who are lonely or alone, and those who grieve. We remember those who are working this day, and we remember others awaiting tests and treatments. By name, we pray for Brenda, Pam, Heather and Charlie, Ron, the McPherson family, the Angel family, Paul, Yitka, and in this time of silence for others, situation and people who are weighing on our hearts this day. Loving God, we remember our family and friends, those whom we love and those who love us. We pray for our students returning to school, for educators and support staff. And ever-present and caring God, we pray for ourselves. Grant us the wisdom to serve you in our words and actions, always seeking close relationship with God, whom we know through Jesus Christ. We pray this in all the petitions of our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have an announcement to share in congregation this morning, I invite you to come forward and uh, to uh, tell us. <laughs> who you are and what you want to share. Good morning, I'm Helen Armchuk, and as you know, we um, held our um, dinner last Sunday for our migrant workers. I want to thank Bonnie and George and um, all who came out to help set up anyone who donated food but couldn't make it, all those who did come and were so great to help um, set up in the kitchen like busy beavers and uh, to clean up and send them off with all of the leftover food. You're a wonderful, wonderful congregation. Thank you.
Hi, Maria. I'm with the Adult Learning Center. Uh, this year, as we have in the past, we're doing a coat drive. Last year, we gave out 180 coats to members of our community. So any used, gently used coats that you don't want anymore, hats, mitts, boots, uh, please, um, John has agreed to put um, a coat rack at the back of the church. So just hang your coats. Uh, we're going to be doing the coat drive on a PD day, which I can't remember, September 25th. It's the last Friday of the month. So anything you have as you're cleaning your closets would be much appreciated. Thank you. My name is Laura Van Berlo, and I'm chair of the Christian Education Committee. Next week is going to be an exciting time. We begin... Um, golly, a new time called dis- for children called Discovery Cove. So your kids will come next week, and they'll all be going to their classes like we've done in the past, and they'll all be heading off to some exciting adventures in Discovery Cove. Ooh. <laughs> Um, we also still are, are looking for people who would love to spend time with our precious ones that come every Sunday morning. Um, lovely volunteers that would love to lead classes. Definitely the grade four, five, six class needs a leader. Um, they are ages nine, ten, and eleven. So please, please come and volunteer and be with these children. We really, really, really need your help. Thank you. My name is Jim Klein, and uh, last February I saw an interesting article on Kitchener News. They were reporting from an arena in Kitchener on what seemed to be eh, an ordinary game of pickup hockey. A player flew down the right wing, cut across the middle, shot, and scored. Nothing new about that. Just a regular game or so, I thought. The camera crew followed the players into the dressing room where they sang happy birthday to this star goal scorer and presented him with a cake to celebrate his 90th birthday. That's right, his 90th birthday. Now this must be fairly important because CTV, you can still go on CTV and see, and, uh, see this happen. Now this gentleman, 90 years old, he's recognized as the most elderly man playing organized hockey in Canada. And uh, not only is he well known, but his wife, on the other hand, is a very accomplished singer who used to sing at a large church in Port Algon, in on Toronto, sorry, and has sang in Port Algon as well. Now, uh, the amazing part of this is that I recognized he and his wife. They're from the Kitchener area, and they summer here in Port Algon. Better still, they come to Port Algon United Church all summer, and they're here this morning. At this time, it's uh, indeed my honor and pleasure to introduce this most wonderful couple and inspiration to everyone, Glenn and Amy Reese, if they would come forward, please. (laughs) Well, I, yes, inspiration for sure, inspiration for sure. But you told his age, you didn't have to do that, right? (laughs) Regulations. Oh, regulations, regulations. Are you going to play hockey this year? No, I played my last last day of winter this year. Okay, all right, but there'll be some other sport, I'm sure. Okay, looking afterwards. Thank you so much and many blessings. You, You ask if I had anything to say, and what I would like to say is that we feel so privileged to be able to come to this lovely church in the summertime and to worship with you. Well, thank you so much. Many blessings. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe we should clean out the uh, side of the uh, activity center someday and put out the hockey sticks. What do you think? <laughs> One more. Good morning. I'm Penny Inkster. The sign-up sheets for Pumpkin Fest 
are not in the resource center because it's under construction, but in the first Sunday school classroom after the chapel. If you'd like to work the day of the event, all those uh, jobs are on a green piece of Bristol board. And if you'd like to cook, there are three orange pieces of Bristol board. So sign up, please. Take the recipes if that's there or the reminder sheets. And thank you very much. I'll see you in two... Well, I missed two Sundays or three. Anyway, I'll be teaching Sunday school in Houston, Texas on September the 9th. (laughs) Yes, the thing is that Pumpkin Fest this year is in September, not in October. So... um, uh, just a reminder as well that the um, uh, Leisure Fair uh, hosted by Sogging Shores is Wednesday evening, and this year Port Elgin United Church will have a presence there. Council, Wednesday night at 7, if you have anything that you want to bring up, uh, speak to our chair, um, certainly, yes, John, <laughs> and uh, you're always welcome to come and sit in. Next Sunday um, is our Welcome Sunday. We hope that you will take the time to invite others to come and to join us, and it will be the sharing of sacrament of, of uh, Holy Communion. So we are going to uh, sing our way out as we sing today, today My Hope is Built. My hope is built. Go from this place and know that God cares for you in our fear, in our sorrow, and in our joy. Go in faith and in love, seeking signs of God's presence in our labor and our leisure. Go in trust, making God's presence known to others through our words and our actions. And may the joy of the Lord be with you. May the teachings of Christ fill you with purpose. May the blessings of the Spirit inspire and uplift you now and always. Amen.